Retro Raconteur here, guys. In this past week, we finally got official confirmation that the Wizarding World of Harry Potter is getting even bigger. That's right, guys. A brand new theme park expansion coming to Universal Orlando. And as someone who hasn't been able to get down there since they added the Diagon Alley section, I absolutely cannot wait for this. But you want to know the most exciting part? We even have a few reliable rumors on the major attractions. And guys, it just sounds so incredibly insane. I, if you can't tell, I'm sorry, my height meter, it's already at a level 10 here. So in this video, I'm going to get you caught up on the top 10 things you need to know about the new theme park expansion. To kick things off here, we have the official name of this section of the park, which will be the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Ministry of Magic. Now, this is not an addition to the Diagon Alley or Hogsmeade sections. It will actually be about two miles south of Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure. It's part of a completely new theme park called Epic Universe set to open sometime in 2020. Now, if you're concerned as to whether they'll be able to hit that target date or not, you should know things are already well underway. We can actually see the entrance to the Ministry of Magic section already complete with the circular portal, and this whole portal thing is a theme across all of the Epic Universe areas. On top, there's a golden statue of a hand holding what appears to be the Elder Wand. You can also see how these shots compare to the concept art currently available on the official website. Here we get a better look at the text across the top of the portal, which features an iconic line from our favorite headmaster, Albus Dumbledore. For in dreams, we enter a world that is entirely our own. There's also what I'm pretty sure is a time turner on top of the portal here. If you've been to any of the Potter theme parks before, you'll know that the attention to detail and the respect to the lore is just incredible here. So I love the fact that it's like we're taking a time turner as we step into this world. And I think there's a very specific reason that we'd need to travel back in time. Because not only are we getting the Ministry of Magic, we're also getting Paris set in the 1920s. This time frame puts us traveling here during the events of the second Fantastic Beast movie, The Crimes of Grindelwald. So essentially, Essentially, as you're walking around the area, everything will look like Paris. All the shops, the restaurants, the interactive experiences, all of these will be themed to what we see during this scene of Crimes of Grindelwald. This Paris section will also be home to one of the two major attractions in the new Wizarding World section. There's an indoor stage show positioned here, and it's expected to be a show called Le Cirque Arcanus, which is the name of the traveling circus in the Crimes of Grindelwald. Of course, this is where we meet Nagini. Yeah, if you didn't see Fantastic Beasts, this is actually Nagini. Turns out she's something called a maledict. And then one of the most important characters in Fantastic Beasts, Credence Barebone. So I'm super curious to see what type of show that they will put on here. I mean, it has to have Wizarding World elements, right? It can't just be a regular circus. Is it possible maybe we'll even see Nagini make an appearance here? The way it plays out in the movie is that is kind of one of the biggest moments of the show, her actually transforming into the snake. Now, this next one takes us a bit into rumored territory because one of the things that we might get to see in Paris, at least from the outside, is the house of Nicolas Flamel. Of course, fans know Flamel mostly as being the maker of the Philosopher's Stone. He also made an appearance though in Fantastic Beasts. He offered his home to Dumbledore as a safe house for allies working to take down Grindelwald. So it seems as if this could be one of the new areas that has a special interaction when you're using wands sold at the park. Now this is already a thing in Islands of Adventure and Universal Studios, but there are a couple of patents floating around out there that makes it seem like the whole interactive wand experience is going to be getting an upgrade, in addition to these new elements at this section of the park. So so we got Paris, Ministry of Magic. How exactly do these two connect? Because they're not physically in the same place, of course. Well, again, it seems like they definitely had the lore in mind here, as it's being reported we'll make our way into the Ministry via the Flu Network. One of my favorite moments in the movies is the first time we get to see the British Ministry of Magic on the big screen. The amazing shots as Harry and Mr. Weasley step out into the massive atrium is such an iconic scene. The Fountain of Magical Brethren, oh man, I can't wait to actually see this in person. Of course, this is the scene where Mr. Weasley accompanies Harry to his trial after he was charged with using magic outside of school as an underage wizard. Now, it's possible the only way to enter the ministry will be through a line for what is the feature attraction of this whole area. The ride inside of that world, I can't tell you because it has to be a surprise. <laughs> and guys, this is the most exciting part for me. Yes, while the movies did a great job showing parts of the ministry, there was so much more that we didn't get to see. But now with this standout attraction, there's a chance we'll get to see some of those areas as well. We don't have the official name of the ride yet, but there are some pretty reliable rumors that it will be called Harry Potter and the Battle at the Ministry. It's expected to feature ride vehicles similar to the elevators that we see in the films. You can expect a combination of animatronics, real sets, and giant wraparound screens, and it's not even expected to require 3D glasses. Of course, you know, they gotta have a story play out as we go through this ride. And there was an early rumor that the story would take place 
during a trial for one Dolores Umbridge, set after the Battle of Hogwarts. As the trial is taking place, though, Death Eaters break in, attempting to free Umbridge. Now, lore fans, you guys will know this might be a bit strange, considering that Umbridge was never a Death Eater. That being said, I guess she did align herself with them pretty closely in the final Potter book, and she certainly didn't seem to have a problem with helping them when they had taken over the Ministry. Now, I think this could be interesting, don't get me wrong, but if the name is actually Harry Potter in the Battle of the Ministry, to me, it would make way more sense to have us play a role in the unforgettable battle during the climax of Order of the Phoenix. I mean, can you imagine getting a first-hand look at Dumbledore and Voldemort battling it out with the giant fire and water spell effects? It would be absolute insanity. Of course, if you're familiar with the storylines on these rides, they're usually pretty laid back, pretty loose. They don't always follow a specific narrative from the book. They try to keep the lore in mind, but with the rides, they always want to make you feel like you're part of the ride and like you're actually helping out the characters. So you definitely have to bend things a little bit here. Regardless of the actual story for the ride, though, I really hope we get to see some of those amazing areas in the ministry. In addition to the courtroom area, this is also the home for numerous offices like the Misuse of Magic office, the Aura headquarters, the Beast Division, and of course, the Department of Mysteries. This is the one that, I'm sorry, it, it has to be included. If you remember from the books, the Department of Mysteries is home to seven different areas, including a room where time behaves differently, the Hall of Prophecy, there's the Brain Room, and even the Death Chamber, which is the location of the mysterious veil that Sirius falls through. Now, it's probably unrealistic, I know, that we'll get to see all of those sections during a ride that's likely just to be a few minutes, but the patents for the ride do give me hope that we could see quite a few of them. The elevator itself should be able to move both vertically, horizontally, and also turn in any direction direction. So we could actually rotate between just a few real world floors and directions, but all of the props and projections could swap out as we move. So with this, there's definitely a chance that we could get to see quite a few of the ministry floors in this ride. Now, before we get to another big rumor about what they might be adding next to the Wizarding World, it's important to know it's not the only new section here. Epic Universe will also be home to a gorgeous new land called Celestial Park, Dark Universe, which will be home to all of Universal's horror creatures, a How to Train Your Dragon themed area, which looks phenomenal, and for all my fellow gamers out there, Super Nintendo World. This one's going to feature an augmented reality ride themed to Mario Kart, a Donkey Kong themed coaster, Coaster, and a slower paced ride for the little ones featuring Yoshi. As far as where you can actually stay, there are not one but three new hotels that will be opening near Epic Universe. In fact, the Grand Helios Hotel, which will have 500 guest rooms, is actually located inside the Epic Universe Park. And as someone who has been to Universal Orlando before, even though it will definitely cost you more to stay on site, I think the benefits more than make up for it. The premier hotels there all include free access to the Universal Express Pass, which basically lets you skip the lines at some of the most popular rides in the park. Now, I do want to point out we don't have the details yet on how this will work, specifically with Epic Universe. I think you can probably expect, though, that they're going to have a similar system to what's already in place for Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure. All right, if that's not enough for the Wizarding World fans, there are already rumors that Epic Universe will see a new Wizarding World edition soon after the park opens. There's a pretty large area of land just next to the Ministry of Magic section, and one of the early rumors, again, I have to stress rumor here, so far a lot of these rumors have actually ended up being right, but this one says that we'll be taking flu powder yet again. This time, though, we're going to be transported directly to Hogwarts into the Great Hall. Here, we would get to enjoy an elaborate dining experience along with storytelling elements that would wait for it, play out on the ceiling as you dine. Like, oh my goodness. Ab yes, yes, please make this happen, Universal. And even though this may be a little odd considering that the Hogwarts castle is actually at the Islands of Adventure section of the park, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Space is limited. But because it's a magical world, we can use something like flu powder to explain it perfectly in a lore accurate way. I love it. And even though we are so many years removed from the Harry Potter series originally releasing, the fandom doesn't appear to be slowing down anytime soon. If you guys didn't hear, a Harry Potter TV show, a reboot of the original seven book story is happening and it's coming to Max, formerly known as HBO Max. You didn't know that? Well, guess what? I already got all the details that you need to know right here. Check out that video next. Guys, thank you so much for your support, especially to our House Wrecking Tour members. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.